Good afternoon and welcome to RCI's Navshikhal channel. I welcome our viewers to our show today. Our topic of discussion for today is modular concept in prosthetics. And to discuss with us on this topic, we have with us our experts, Mr. Sujit Kumar Maurya, who is a chief prosthetist and orthotist with the Technomate India Limited. And Mr. Santosh Kumar Singh, who is a chief prosthetist and orthotist with the Prosil Rehabilitation. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, Thank before we move on with the discussion, I would just give a brief introduction as to what we'll be discussing today. Uh, we'll be discussing the modular concepts, which basically mean a shift from the conventional methods, which were age-old and earlier used in prosthetics. So now we'll move on and before we move on, I would request our viewers to please call us on any of these numbers in case of any relevant queries for this discussion today. The toll free number is 18001212008, the phone number is 265 and the fax number is 265 We'll move on with the discussion now. Uh, to begin with, I would just ask you, what exactly do we mean by this whole shift in uh, from the conventional to the modular concept? Like uh, modular concepts came from the... Uh, it's a, like a module if you understand about the modules like in every in our everyday life if you see around us a lot of things are made in modular made of modular concept because if you are making a handmade the prosthesis means the um, basically particularly in a prosthetics it is not up to the mark if you are it is it has been uh, means made in the modules so it has been aligned to our means in workshop and it is a uh, very much uh, good fitted to the patients basically so that's why we uh, means the process has, processes has been shifted to modulus concept earlier it was made of wooden and all those things it has been carved out and it takes a lot of time a lot of long time but but nowadays in the all the systems are prefabricated in means uh, industries heavy industries and that uh, modules comes to us and we have to just align make the socket and fit to the patients and even the accuracy in the processes is also uh, very uh, at maximum you can say so that means this modular concept is basically more efficient and effective yeah. in its use and purpose. So we'll uh, move on first. Uh, let's start with the complications that are involved. Complications are rapid early growth phase, cosmesis, functional output, interchangeability of components, flexibility of system design. Actually, what happens that uh, previously two types of systems are there. The integrated system one, the second one is modular system. The integrated system comprises of a whole the limb as a whole, whole the limb as a unit. But the modular system basically is composed of different type of units that are assembled in the workshop according to patient's need. This is the basic difference between the integrated system and the modular system. So previously in uh, when the artificial limb were invented by Hippocrates in uh, 2000 VC, then uh, such type of uh, prosthesis were made up of iron. So that concept was not an integrated concept actually, but that concept was a modular concept. Different types of iron modules were integrated according to patient need. Then came that integrated concept, then whole the limb made up of resin or um, a PVC, polyvinyl chloride pipe, uh, then, uh, then it's so called like uh, so called uh, Jaipur foot. The whole the limb was made as a unit, but after that, when uh, different type of socket fabrication methods came, ischial containment sockets came, so the modern socket design need, needed actually that uh, your uh, modular concept. Like uh, so the modular concept, there are <coughs> in modular concept there are different types of modules. So, as for example, for a upper extremity prosthesis the basic component will be socket that socket is fabricated inside the workshop according to the need of patient the measurement is taken the cast is taken then modifications are done then socket is made then all the components like pylon joints and uh, hand this type of units are then assembled according to patient need they come from different companies and diff an interchangeability of component is also possible as for example, if we are using uh, an elbow joint of, uh, uh, as say, indolite, then we may use a hand of autobock. So two different type of companies can 
be used in such type of prosthesis whichever is better according to patient need so interchangeability is there second one is flexibility flexibility means uh, if uh, as for example it is particularly true in the case of uh, younger child so in younger child there is a rapid growth phase the child grows uh, very rapidly and in such case if you are going through integrated system then that system in this type of system we have to frequently change the whole of the prosthesis but in such type of system only socket is changed and sometimes at two to three uh, years duration the foot is changed foot unit is changed and the whole the system like pylon uh, the ankle adapter socket adapter these the, the, the system that are costlier the joint that are costlier are not needed to be changed this is the basic benefit of modular concept so basically it means that uh, there is more of flexibility in the modular concept as uh, in for example if you take the case of a child if suppose he has a rapid growth phase or something like uh, of that case then in that case the whole prosthetic does not need to be changed uh, there can be a slight uh, change in the prosthetics that he's using so that is the basic advantage of using a modular concept and basically the um, uh, good advantage of the modular concept is that in the conventional system if a patient fail to means if you had not adopted the system you can't align it if you had made this processes if it is made it wrong it, you have to throw out the whole limb but in this uh, modular concept in the modular pro processes what you you can align it you can change it like something like i just give the example of this like these are the mother this is the knee joint this is the pylon that that uh, that covers the sheen bone this is the ankle this sorry this is the ankle and this is the foot piece if suppose patients after some time he do he needs that i won't change the foot so he can be just remove the foot and it can be changed So this is an example that uh, if this has to be replaced or if it has to be changed, then we can remove the foot. For example, we yeah, just yeah. as we just showing that we can. In a matter the of minutes. Okay. But in integrated system, we have to throw the pre-adjusted oh, limb the and then hold fabricate the hold the limb again. Okay. Like this foot, if patient wants to change, if it is break down or something like uh, something happened to the foot, it can be changed. If patient wants to upgrade the foot because foot also had been from last 20 years it has been researched and a lot of foots has been every day it is a changing like high activity foots are in the market so he can change if he wants to after one year use he wants to go for upgrade system he can change the foot he don't have to means change the whole the limb so this is the advantage of the modular system in the same way like this is knee joint now this is a four bar linkage knee joint if he wants to go for a better like this one is a spring loaded if he wants to go for a pneumatic system he can go for the pneumatic system it is a more advanced if he wants to go for a computerized like in uh, today in this uh, right now in the markets so like computerized knee joints are also available who can sense your movement and according to uh, your normal movement uh, like they can adjust your uh, the movement of artificial limb so he wants to change for that system he can go for that just only he has to change the knee joints so this is the basic uh, big advantage of this prosthetic modular system over the conventional system and the benefit of the pylon is that uh, if uh, the patient grows as in child uh, if a child amputee is there and if the child grows very rapidly then we have to increase the length of pylon only if we increase the length of pylon then the length of whole the prosthesis is increased so we have to change only the pylon not the whole system and secondly the joint joint with the costliest part we can save the joint and if the patient want to go for a hydraulic system to pneumatic system want to interchange then we just remove the cylinder the remo remove the hydraulic cylinder then place the pneumatic cylinder and the, then hold the system hold the concept is changed so this is the interchangeability of the component that is the basic idea behind the modular concept
So that means it's a very interesting concept and a very important thing is that the, all the paths in this processes are interchangeable as well as all the paths are interdependent of each other and it's not that one part is dependent on the other, it cannot be removed in case uh, it needs to be. So this is a very interesting and independent type of system. So that's why I guess it's gaining popularity amongst uh, today. So we'll move. Yeah. Now the next part is the like a socket. So most of the uh, in the prosthetic system, the socket is changed because uh, due to frequent use, like child, if he is using the processes after, means he is grown up. So after the that socket has to uh, has to be changed. So every time you just remove this socket, this part can be removed and it can be changed. You just take the another cast and you just uh, make the socket. So. Uh, um, uh, the next big advantage is with this kind of system is it is a time saving because in conventional system it takes a lot of time to fabricate the processes but in these kind of modular concept it's a very time saving you just come come to us it, within a day its socket can be made and processes can be delivered if something is an alignment problem that can be adjusted it within a minutes so 5 or 10 minutes can be adjusted and a patient will be get rid of that any problem but in the conventional system it it can't be if it is a problem it can it can it has to be through the process has to be thrown out that's a bigger disadvantage of conventional system so that means the modular concept is very time saving as well the time factor is uh, kept into con consideration while formulating this concept as everything can be done within few minutes or maximum a day uh, depending on the type of uh, rearrangement that has to be made. So these are the advantages that we are discussing of the modular concept of prosthetics. So we move on with the uh, next slide uh, now. So here we are going to discuss some of the modular prosthesis, some of the modular systems. We are starting from upper extremity. There are body powered system and modular concept that are lightweight, simple design cost effectiveness, heavy duty, water resistant and ease of rough use in case of children. The disadvantages are lack of precision grip, less pinch force, 3 to 4 kg force is there, need harness for dunning and poor cosmesis. Then there are electronic systems, there are myoelectric hands. In myoelectric hands, switch control is most popular. That is proportional control by auto work is available, RSL stiffer and UTA arm also providing proportional control processes. Upper extremity modular processes are generally dis uh, distributed in uh, three type of groups, the myoelectrical, mechanical and cosmetic. It is a myoelectric hand, transhumeral scamp hand. In such type of hand, it is clearly visible that the socket part is made in, uh, according to individual needs. Then the pylon is there, then the elbow joint, then the battery and socket joint, then the hand unit, hand and wrist unit. Then myo and servoelectric hands are there. Then the pro digit, which is the most advanced hand, pro digit and bionic hand are the more, most uh, uh, advanced hand nowadays. The energy scamp with power safe features. There are multi-control powered grippers are there, but the grippers are not so popular in India, but in European countries for a specific tasking, the grippers are most popular. Where cosmesis is not in concern, the grippers are most popular. And the elbow unit in endoskeleton, electrically locked elbow units, programming is done on the computer with the help of a computer. Then there are electronic systems, they are comprised of sensors, switches, electrodes, servo transducers, battery pack, electronic control modules, servo interlock, electric elbow, obsolete modules, then servo interlock to automatic elbow, then there are processes for transhumeral fittings. Transmitter carpal fitting. In this of the system, actually in upper extremity prosthesis, the whole system, if we uh, from external view, if we see the uh, uh, modular uh, modular prosthesis also, it looks like integrated system. 
but the battery packs can be individually interchanged the wrist unit can be interchanged and the, if the wrist unit uh, is interchanged and a hand unit is also interchanged from a gripper to a hand unit and such type of pressure. Transradial infant hand. Then there are functional devices. There are passive hands. Infant foam filled hands. Foam filled hands with extended wires. A stiffer hands enhanced and original, cable driven hands, in my child hands, voluntary opening and voluntary closing hands, cable operated hands with child sizes, cable operated hands robinettes design, electrically operated hands, scamp hands, child adult hands, myo hands and proportional control, myo hand with CCS, functional devices, and hand hand devices. So that means uh, these are the various kind of prosthetics that are used for yeah. different kinds of people with different kinds of needs. Yeah, different, different types types of And of they are all custom made for every yeah. person. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. The socket has to be customized but the things are, uh, rest can be used by anybody. Means uh, according to the need of the patient and according to the size we select that uh, that hand. Like they are uh, the different kind of hands are available. So we first choose, uh, see the what the patient's requirement. What is the patient's requirement? According to that, that we will choose the uh, means hand, and we will uh, make the processes. Like in this, uh, like uh, uh, in earlier slide, we had seen these are the functional devices. It is just only for the function, like for a gripping of the hand, uh, the the person who uh, who is doing some mechanical work. So these are the devices that can be fitted with the hand, so he can do his some mechanical works. So, according to the patient's need, the, the, uh, this is the advantage of the modular concept. It can be interchanged and it can be fitted to according to the patient's choice. As for example, the patient has to hold a hammer, then he may use uh, uh, the round shape functional device. And if he has to hold a fist, then he may use the spike type functional devices. So, interchangeability of components is there. Within a fraction of second, the patient may remove one type of functional devices and then replace another type of functional devices for a particular type of job. So, this uh, changing can be done by the patient himself? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Especially for the upper extremity processes because terminal device it can be changed because if patient is a multi doing a multitasking job, he will uh, maybe he will pay, uh, keep two or three kind of this kind of functional devices with him so whenever he is using uh, that uh, function he will change the uh, device and he will do his function and second time if he is doing another function he will change it so it is a rapid changing system so it is a very means it's not a very uh, means uh, uh, time taking procedure it's a very short of second i think 30 seconds or one minute 30 seconds are enough 30 seconds is enough to change the device so he can so these are the modular concept of the processes and it is very useful for so the So the prosthetists provide proper training to the yeah, patient for the changing and interchanging changing of and these interchanging, right. functional devices. Okay. So it's it's an amazing concept how there are various functional devices which can be interchanged by the patient himself, the person himself who is using this uh, artificial limb and it can be used for a multiple purpose job that the uh, person wants to do if he is involved in various tasks he can do the multitasking and depending on the function that he is performing he can use uh, a relative uh, functional device according to the job that he is performing. So this is how the whole system of the modular concept works. So we will move on to the next slide now. This talks about the handheld devices. So yeah. Then there are passive devices like knife, fork, spoon, nail brush, typing, These are potato the holders. These are according to patient's needs. Again the similar kind of thing with yeah, different yes, functional yes, devices yeah, which the functions. person can interchange. Yeah. Now, this is the modular lower limb process. No, yeah, so modular lower limb now discussing about the upper limbs. Yeah. Now we move now on. We are, now limbs. we are discussing lower limb prosthesis. The concept of uh, modular prosthesis came actually first in lower limb prosthetics, and more relevant in lower limb prosthetics because even we are uh, fabricating the integrated system for upper extremity prosthesis. The interchangeability of uh, terminal devices were there already there. So only 
the socket after socket that uh, pylon and elbow joint that two types of uh, that uh, um, modules are now available there are no too much changes in upper extremity prosthetics but in lower extremity prosthetics the concept of uh, that modules are more relevant so now we are going to discuss uh, modular concept in lower limb prosthetics the topics are foot and ankle trans tibial system knee joint mechanism trans femoral system new with endoskeletal systems like uh, in foot and ankle system if you see like in upper extremity we don't have a uh, lot of uh, means uh, variety or something like a lot of concepts available in foot and ankle system but nowadays in the market at least 50 to 60 kind of uh, foot and ankle systems are there in the same way for uh, just a bit this right yeah. In the trans tibial also, like the foot system, uh, that what systems I right now I am showing you, this is the basic means uh, normal and uh, such foot kind of things. But uh, nowadays, uh, energy saving foots, carbon fiber foots, that's, that is used by uh, athlete people, those who can uh, use that uh, that kind of foot system and th they can run. So the cost will also go up yeah, according cost, to the cost higher will definitely will go. That uh, means uh, a simple uh carbon fiber foot will cost you around two two to three lakh rupees okay. just only foot piece and this one is for how much this one is i think uh, five to six thousand rupees yes and this is what kind of a foot joint it's a uh, basically it's a pu this is uh, it's made of polyurethane okay. foam basically and it is a uh, uh, what is the properties of polyurethane it's a very lightweight uh, actually and as well as it's a very flexible so it gives you a proper movement on toe break when patient is walking it gives you a proper toe break so patient is walking comfortably that is the advantage with the pu and that's uh, that's why the uh, modular concept is also a very good means uh, it is a very useful in terms of lightweight because earlier the what process is conventional system it is very if you see the pylon is very lightweight I, if you compare to the conventional system it, this is a scene part uh, and if you compare with the sheen part of the conventional system it would be a very heavy it will be 10 to 15 times heavier than the conventional system means uh, sorry if, uh, from the modular system so that is the advantage with that in the same way the foot foot is also very lightweight but in the conventional system again it will it will be heavier so this is this comes in the lowest range of uh, yeah the lowest range of, uh, okay. of foot choice yeah. So now we are going to discuss uh, foot and ankle. The distributions are satch foot, classic and active foot. Yeah. This is the basic uh, uh, foot designs. So if you could just uh, briefly yeah. explain. These are these are all, all are the I was talking about that uh, they are the energy saving foots energy saving foots and these are the different company manufacturers are making according to their means of design and all those things so different mil, uh, like in the uh, first one if you see it is a uh, dynamic kind of foot and it is integrated ankle in there and inside there is the, they some sometimes they keep the spring coil or something like it given to extra jump. To the patients when patient is uh, getting uh, moving so it gives you a pushback it's something i uh, mean some uh, pushback so it will be less energy consumed means less energy will consume in the process of gain and second one is also the same kind of thing but the third one third one is a simple this kind of uh, uh, satch foot only satch foot but just only the manufacturer is different so the, they make a, a different shape see so if are uh, just uh, four type of four systems are there the first one i as, as i just told the first one is a dynamic system the second one is dynamic with uh, um, uh, with a uh, torsion with torsion unit the third one is a simple satch foot with pyramidal adapter and the fourth one is dynamic response foot so if you are using the pylon with the same pylon we can interchange all the foot the pylon will be same. The foot can be changed according to patient need from one system to another. Sometimes what happens is that the patient have two or three types of foot and according to his requirement, he changes, he changes his foot. If he is doing common household work, he is using satch foot. If he is going outside working, he is using dynamic foot. And if he is running or uh, he is doing a sprinting type of heavy duty job, then he is using carbon fiber foot or flax foot. 
so such type of interchangeability is possible in such uh, in modular cancer and even this changing can be done by the patient himself yeah and this takes not uh, not uh, all the times but okay. if the patient is using the prosthesis up to uh, uh, i think 6 uh, to 1 is properly trained he can do it he but can do it himself and uh, definitely i think in under supervision he is properly trained then he can do it he can do it okay. like for and example in dynamic foot here uh, the patient can use the dynamic foot with different heel height shoes or different heel height sandals so with the help of a common knob or a align adapter he can uh, increase the height of foot or decrease the height of foot so uh, the patient is properly trained in such type of activity but in uh, in training period the prosthesis the prosthetist has to do it himself and, and then train the patient approximately how much time will the person take it to do it himself the soul changing process? it depends on patient to patient so which is the other learning capacity for example patient, in the upper limb on average on average two or three sittings are required for the patient no for example in an upper limb it takes around 30 seconds as you said for the patient to change the yeah, for interchangeability yeah, uh, so yeah it's, it's around 30 30 seconds to 1 minute okay so that means that again in the lower limb also the person can interchange the functional device according to his need and according to the function that he's performing uh, if he's doing a household chorus then he can use a different type of uh, device if he's going for running he can use a different type of device so in this whole uh, modular concept we have the whole interchangeability and interdependence uh, of the parts different parts in a prosthesis uh, pr- uh, prosthesis and uh, this is a very interesting concept so we've already discussed all the advantages related to this we have discussed the upper limb already and now we're discussing the lower limbs we'll move on to, uh, with the discussion but right now it's time for a short break so we'll see after break The chief handicap of the blindness is not blindness but the attitude of seeing people towards them. आइए जानने और समझने की कोशिश करते हैं कि बधिरांधता यानी डेफ ब्लाइंडनेस क्या है बधिरांधता एक स्थिति है जिसमें दृष्टिहीनता एवं सुनने की शक्ति में कमी आती है तथा जिससे विचारों के आदान प्रदान और रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताओं की पूर्ति में समस्या उत्पन्न होती है बलराम एक नौ साल का बधिरांत बच्चा है वो एक प्री मैच्योर बच्चा है जिसका शारीरिक विकास उसकी आयु के अनुरूप नहीं हुआ था वो एक निम्न वर्गीय श्रेणी से संबंध रखता है तथा पांच साल से लगातार नेशनल एसोसिएशन फॉर ब्लाइंड दिल्ली के प्रशिक्षण कार्यक्रम से संलग्न है इन पांच सालों के अंतर्गत उसे रोजमर्रा के कामों में हलन चलन में उसकी शैक्षणिक जरूरतों के अनुसार संप्रेषण द्वारा प्रशिक्षण दिया गया है जिससे वो इन सब क्रियाओं में स्वावलंबी बन सके बलराम बिना किसी सहायता के चाकू से फलों को काट सकता है उनके छिलकों को कूड़ेदान में डाल सकता है अपने बर्तनों को खुद साफ कर सकता है उन्हें सही जगह पर रख सकता है सही बर्तनों का चयन करके खुद खाना खाता है एवं पानी की बोतल निकालकर पानी भी पीता है इन सभी क्रियाओं में वो 
टेक्चुअल साइन लैंग्वेज से निर्देशों को ग्रहण करता है और अपने भावों को व्यक्त करता है टेलर फ्रेम और ब्रेलर द्वारा गणित पठन लेखन में भी प्रशिक्षण प्राप्त कर रहा है सभी बच्चों की तरह उसका भी एक मनपसंद खेल है उसे सेलफोन को अपने कानों पर लगाकर उसका कंपन महसूस करना अच्छा लगता है कहा जाता है वॉकिंग विद अ फ्रेंड इन डार्क इज बेटर देन वॉकिंग अलोन इन लाइट कहने का तात्पर्य है कि वो लॉन्ग केन ट्रेवल टेक्टाइल पाथ ट्रेलिंग और लैंडमार्क्स द्वारा हलन चलन में भी सक्षम है और व्यायाम संबंधी क्रियाएं जैसे ट्रेडमिल स्टैटिक साइकिल का स्वचालन भी कर सकता है कहा गया है द बेस्ट एंड मोस्ट ब्यूटीफुल थिंग्स इन द वर्ल्ड कैन नॉट बी सीन और इवन टच दे मस्ट बी फेल्ट विद द हार्ट Welcome back after the break. Our topic discussion for today is modular concept in prosthetics, and right now we would we just discussed uh, the upper limb modular concepts. We discussed all the advantages involved in the upper limb uh, modular concept, and now we were discussing the lower limb. We just discussed the uh, foot and ankle th- part, and now we'll move on with the discussion. It's now the new stellar foot. So yeah, this is the basically a kind of a foot, new stellar foot. Just like in uh, we can see the um, what are the advantage of this foot. adjustable heel cushion so means heel cushion can be adjusted like uh, ladies those who are wearing uh, high heels sandals and all so they can adjust the heel cushions and uh, easily adjust that easily align so uh, that is also a integral titanium pyramid one of the uh, uh, the biggest advantage of the modular concept is the basically you can uh, we have a different kind of materials like this is this one is uh, titanium like we have um, an other company makes from steel that is some sometime th- uh, that is used carbon fiber and some of the aluminum alloy so you have a different choice of may means all these components are made in different material so patient have a choice which material he wants to use so that's the big big advantage in the same way the integral titanium pyramid titanium is a very high quality uh, alloy that that is used in uh, this kind of foot which is very lightweight and very uh very strong cosmetically pleasing like if you see the foot is very cosmetically uh, uh very good and toe and everything is uh, looking so patient go barefoot it will not look very odd and competitively priced price is also not very much range of skin tones it can also it is also available in different kind of uh, means uh, patient choice of not w- exactly matching but it has a like a darker shade light shades very light shade very fair so patient can choose nearby shades of his own skin tones versatile one foot covers a range of heel hardness so uh, what exactly this is they are uh, basically the upper cover of the prosthesis can be interchanged the uh, the <coughs> internal endoskeleton is same but the upper cover can be changed according to patient need if the, uh, as for example as we are uh, discussing about the child amputee in case of child amputee we d- we don't have to change whole the foot we have to change the cover only but the internal endoskeleton will be same so the only cost of covering will be included with the, with the we will prosthesis s- we will see in, in next slide so how how it is looks like so the integral system of foot and the covering how the internal skeleton of the foot will look like and then how the cover is uh, fitted we will see in next slide <coughs> like you just see the this is the, that is the um, uh, that is the in- integral system and uh, on the left side it is a 
uh, the covering it Put can covering. be changed this is basically a senior foot replaceable foot cosmesis that, that is again the same things and suitable for low activity users and size 20 to 28 these are the sizes means uh, the different sizes are you can change the foot cell from 22 inches to uh, 22 centimeter to 28 centimeter within this range but the endoskeleton the main endoskeleton will be same senior this, foot this then is integrated when two modules like covering and uh, the pyramidal endoskeleton is uh, uh, um, assembled then the foot will look like this after integration it will look like a light lightweight uh, solid ankle cushion heel system plenty of cushioning is there and integral pyramid is there then there is equalim Equalimo is basically the covering that can be used with any type of prosthesis, either endoskeleton or exoskeleton. So the covering, there are a small cushions or a small air bubbles that is called vacuum bubbles at the plantar surface of the foot. So the patient uh, does not escape when he, while he is uh, walking on the, that uh, frictionless surface or uh, in your in his bathroom or toilet where the surface is slippery. So it's water resistant such foot design designed for barefoot use maximum grip on weight surfaces three skin tones are there maximum for 80 kg of uh, weight group of patients it is used then here, then there is a dynamic response foot to it is more energy stored incre increased energy return adjustable kill resistance more cushioned plantar flexion accommodates heel height recommended for a wide range seamless construction is there <coughs> now more energy is stored and increased energy return previously in quantum foot in conventional quantum foot steel plates were used so the, when the patient uh, during hill strike when the patient strikes his, strikes his hill then there is uh, absorption of energy the the hill cushion is compressed or the uh, you can say the hill plate is compressed and while the two of that returns the energy that the recoiling of a spring actually lifts the foot during the toe off so such type of facility is there but new now with that uh, carbon fiber foot plates in place of a steel foot plate now carbon fiber foot plates are used the carbon fiber foot plates are actually light in weight and they are they have more energy absorption capacity and more energy release capacity so it is more useful in case of very active present. Now adjustable kill resistance. We can uh, uh, just change the resistance of kill and uh, uh, change the foot for the daily use or for uh, sprinting activities or for heavy duty activities. Now accommodates hill height. Hill height adjust. Uh, hill height accommodation is there. Recommended for a wide range, wide range of patient, wide range of, of weight group of patients, and seamless construction is there. So the patient can use uh, shoes or uh, or uh, footwear easily. Then there is <coughs> tibial torsion multiflex ankle, 5 to 8 mm vertical travel is there. 30 degree of rotation is there. Idea uh, ideal for above and below knee amputees incorporates an elastomer compression buffer available at standard assemblies 5 to 8 mm vertical travel means the patient uh, the foot can go ahead and come backward 5 to 8 mm now 30 degree of rotation is there while walking or while uh, the where the torsional activities are required as for example for uh, in golfing in golfing the torsion of tvi is required so that torsional activities are available with such type of foot ideal for above and below knee amputees incorporates an elastomer compression buffer means in the hill part of foot there is an elastomer compression buffer when the patient is striking the foot it really uh, it uh, absorbs the energy and they release the energy with a higher impact now available as a standard assemblies so that means the various kind of foot limbs that can be used yeah. by a person and they uh, all have their uh, 
individual advantages and individual facilities advantages that they can provide yeah. and each one can be used by the person depending on his uh, need and requirement need and requirement yeah definitely when when you have a um, uh, you are taking a more more and more feature it will be definitely it will be a costlier like last one uh, which has been shown that was a torsion this is like it gives you a rotational something like a patient walks on road a sudden rotation so it automatically gives you a, that rotation on your tibia so it is a very helpful the patient who do a very lot of uh, athlete activity but definitely you have to pay for that so does the material also change of the limb or is the material the same the material that's used to no, make the limb basic yeah. material is same basic material is same okay but an added component that is a tibial torsional unit that is added with the dynamic response to foot like uh, if you see the black portion that uh, that the ankle portion that is a, that is, that components gives that my means it can be changed if your patient wants to normal one that can be upper portion can be removed and it can be changed so that means uh, with every added feature and with every new facility that is there in a the limb the, uh, automatically obviously the price of the limb goes up yeah yeah so uh previously what happened that uh, when the uh, the patient was using common socket and common pylon common foot face so when he was doing torsional activities like golfing or uh, or sports activities where torsion is required then there was a frictional torsion between the socket and the stump the patient amputated part so there was a friction activities there to reduce this frictional activities between the stump and the socket that tibial torsional design was invented basically now multi talented combinations we are going to discuss uh, the same foot is there with without uh, tibial torsional activity it is called multiflex foot and in multiflex the greatest advantage of the multiflex foot is that uh, flexion range and extension range that the plantar flexion and dorsiflexion of the foot can be adjusted according to patient need and it is a unique combination of strength light weight and natural movement adjustable to weight and activity heel height easily set excellent performance on uneven ground sizes from 22 cm right up to 30 cm light weight ankle available with 30 mm or 35 mm housings and the mercury foot uh, in such type of foot we can clearly show you up that what is the carbon fiber plate where is the covering and where is the pyramid where is the ankle adapter so there are some total four modules the first one is the endoskeleton uh, that endos the that in this endoskeleton uh, the carbon fiber foot plate can be also changed according to patient need and if the carbon fiber foot plate accidentally if there is any crack or if there will be any damage that foot plate can be only changed not the whole system then there is main assembly then there is pyramid adapter then there is ankle adapter then lastly there is foot cover and there is three carriers three carrier means ankle adapter pyramidal system and the foot plates this is also one kind of uh, sporting activity uh, foot and these are the very latest models of uh, uh, and it gives you a very high activity means patients in, with these kinds of foot patient is using so he will means in a whole day he will uh, uh, means uh, consume a, means a lesser energy so the patient will not tired up that's the advantage of these kind of foot system so, so in a way uh, a normal person with a normal a normal person like us who uh, we people have got normal limbs so yeah. do these people with these limbs have an advantage over uh, having more energy yeah definitely like um, uh, if uh, patients uh, uh, i think uh, one news was there in a uh, uh that patient was uh, means uh, patient was fitted with this kind of limb i uh, means high activity limb and he was yeah, running yeah, yeah, yeah. running far better than normal person no but it was a uh, paralympics and uh, the patient the um, has completed his run in uh, 9.5 seconds actually and it was better than uh, the best athlete available in the world Yeah. with that type prosthetic system so the people blamed that it is uh, because he is using a, a energy storing foot a carbon fiber foot 
So that means the energy level rises so up by using these. He is uh, not using his body power. He is not using his stamina. Basically, his food is a um, such type of energy storing food that he is working so like far. That he is so less far. energy he is uh, putting, and the maximum push is uh, given by the foot. So that's why he is a uh, more faster. Uh, yeah, <coughs> now I want to show you the um, independent twelve Hindi springs as we have discussed. carbon fiber maximum working length supplied as matched pairs as a range for individual customization now we are going to discuss the mercury foot the mercury foot is simple robust construction low build height maximum energy return and easily customize here is the uh, internal construction and design of the dynamic response foot too in sub top design uh, we can see this <coughs> it is called c kill because the uh, or darlin kill in sometimes in sometimes it is called darlin kill and the shape is like c we can uh, we can assume that when the patient strike his hill then the hill cushion is compressed and then in the latter phase of uh, his gait cycle the energy is returned so the walking becomes very easy easily extended toe lever increased hill volume is there patient adjustment dorsiflexion resistance is there but requires 15 mm extra clearance 15 mm extra clearance means Uh, it can't be fitted with all types of amputated stumps at least from ankle joint from the ankle level 15 mm clearance should be there that means if a, um, the uh, from from ankle joint to ground if the length is 9 cm then it requires extra 1.5 cm to fit this type of foot so this is the kind of limitation that this is there this is kind of limitations does not have separate big toes no dynamic response foot to dynamic response foot to is also uh, a type of dynamic response but dy dynamic response foot to has a roll over protector roll over protector has the role to just uh, provide more energy efficiency and secondly uh, what happens with the dynamic response foot when the patient is doing heavy activities for a long time then the it used to um, just uh, tear the uh, cover of the foot to just protect the uh, tearing of the cover and secondly to provide more energy efficient gait such type of dynamic response foot to is used mm. back on then below the carbon fiber system sir yeah like we had discussed about the foot system now we will go up to so after foot there is a pylon pylon is nothing pylon is a basically uh, uh, if you see your after the ankle there is a sheen bone that is the sheen bone replacement is a pylon and then pylon is made of different companies made in different materials like autobock makes in titanium and steel and indolite makes in carbon fiber and uh the company from tehlin that makes in carbon fiber and aluminium alloy some of the company makes and also in different mix up materials so this one is titanium yeah uh, this one is a titanium no this is i think so this is aluminium alloy okay. aluminium this uh, knee joint adapter is, is made of titanium and adapter is, is made of titanium this is from autobock autobock okay. this is from the autobock so the pylon is basically a pipe kind of things if you see so it is uh, the uh, it has to be go with the foot system and over that the uh, the knee jointing for the below knee like this is the for above knee if patient is amputated from the above the knee the knee has to be placed otherwise it has to be placed directly patient has a knee so now this is the missing part and this has to be fitted now if you see this is the basically a below knee system okay now the foot pylon and over that that adapter uh, adapter is basically a nothing it is attachment between socket and uh, pylon an alignment possibility is there alignment possibility Which is there now type of uh, pyramidal adapter as uh, for example this one is a pyramidal adapter so such type of adapter 
10 to 15 degree of alignment possibility is there. You can see clearly 10 yeah. to 15 degree of alignment possibility in any direction is possible. So it makes very easy to fabricate a prosthesis and save the time of a, a prosthetist as well as a patient. Because in a two uh, socially oriented society, the people have very less time and uh, they just uh, want to expend uh, very less time for their uh, prosthetic fittings and all. Uh, so, if you are going to expend very less time, the patient is very happy. So, this is the basically, uh, if you see clearly see, uh, like it is a baloney system. Now, we have uh, from the foot, we had come to the baloney system. On every aspect, means here you can interchange, means here you can do the adjustment because it's a, uh, there is a pyramid attachment. You can adjust 10 to 15 degree. Now, in the ankle part also, you can adjust it and adjust it whatever the angle if you want, you can adjust it here. So, means adjustment at every every modular system means every module is possible so patient because the patient is amputated it is not uh, ideal every time patient is not uh, ideal you have to do the adjustment and these are the possibilities in the modular system that's why module system are very popular and it is going to cover means called conventional system over that means they are going to cover the conventional system that is the so, w we, uh, if you see the slides, that is the multiflex system and dynamic response to system. That is basically not uh, exactly uh, uh, according to the foot, but the systems are same. Just only the foot, foot uh, according to foot, the name is given. In the baloney, like a multiflex system, the, because the multiflex system foot is used. So, it is called multiflex system, dynamic response to system, because it is a dynamic response to system, so foot is used. Because all the, whatever the mechanism is there, that is in the foot. Because over that, we have, don't have the mechanism. When we are going to the above knee, so we will call the system according to the knee joint. Yes. Yeah. Next slide. These are the, some properties of the dynamic response to like what are the, the carbon fiber keel provides greater energy return, increased heel volume and the integral stiffness mechanism and suitable for? Suitable for uh, lightweight uh, and uh, for lightweight and heavy and uh, heavyweight patients also. In multiflex system a lightweight and a strength carbon fiber seen, keel manufactured from a new long fiber composite materials provides increased heel cushioning, adjustable heel height interchangeable ball and snubber components two sizes of ankle are available with that multiflex system a ball and snubber assembly is used so the balls in place of pyramidal system if you are going to use a ball system in pyramidal system flexion extension abduction adduction in term of foot plantar flexion dorsiflexion inversion and eversion possibilities are there but not the rotational system was there with the pyramidal system, not rotational component is there. If you are going to use a pyramidal system, we can see clearly that we can provide the angulation only in forward, backward, side, medial and lateral. But rotational possibilities are not there with pyramidal adapter. But with ball and snubber assembly, if, if that in pyramidal system, if the four rounded corners is interchanged with a ball, then rotational possibility is also there. So basically in a multiflex system, in place of pyramidal system, we use a ball and a snubber assembly. So rotational possibility is also there with type of a torsional capacity. The patient can uh, play golf and do torsional activities. So this is the basic difference with the multiflex system and the previously described uh, dynamic response system. So that means this now we just discussed the multiflex system and all the features that are related with the system and before that we've discussed that how different materials um, and how different types of uh, how a new facility is added into each limb then the cost automatically goes higher so right now we're discussing the various types of limbs uh, the lower limbs that can be used in the modular concept and uh, similarly as in the upper limb uh, the interchangeability is there of the parts in this system also so we'll discuss more but right now it's time for a short break we'll see you after break
हम होंगे काम में हम होंगे काम में हम होंगे काम में आप एक दिन ओ मन में है विश्वास पूरा है विश्वास हम होंगे काम में आप एक दिन we shall overcome we shall overcome we shall overcome someday oh deep in my heart i do believe that we shall overcome someday we shall overcome someday we shall overcome someday ऑटिज्म एक व्यापक विकासात्मक विकलांगता है जिसके लक्षण जीवन के प्रथम तीन वर्ष में ही दिखाई पड़ते हैं जैसे असंगत खेल असमान स्थूल एवं सूक्ष्म गामक क्रियाएं शाब्दिक संकेतों पर अभिव्यक्ति न देना देखो ओपन ओपन करो ओपन ओपन करके ओपन ओपन नियमित कार्यक्रम परिवर्तन का विरोध करना एवं अवलोकनीय शारीरिक उच्च स्तरीय या निम्न स्तरीय क्रियाकलाप यूएनसीआरपीडी 2007 सेक्शन वन ऑफ आर्टिकल फोर निशक्तता के क्षेत्र में कार्यरत प्रोफेशनल के प्रशिक्षण पर महत्व देता है ऑटिज्म के क्षेत्र में सरकारी एवं गैर सरकारी संस्थाएं कार्यरत हैं जो भारतीय पुनर्वास परिषद द्वारा पंजीकृत है सोसाइटी फॉर एडवांस स्टडी इन रिहेबिलिटेशन एक ऐसी ही गैर सरकारी संस्था है कनिष्क तेरह साल का एक ऑटिस्टिक बच्चा है जो इसी संस्था से प्रशिक्षण प्राप्त कर रहा है असंगत क्रियाएं कार्यकलापों में निरस्ता असमान स्थूल एवं सूक्ष्म गामक क्रियाएं जैसे बॉडी रॉकिंग और फिंगर रिगलिंग उसमें देखी जा सकती है उसे मैचिंग और पेस्टिंग पॉइंटिंग जैसी क्रियाएं सिखाई जाती हैं। वेरी गुड ग्लास चलो ग्लास वेर इज द ग्लास चलो बाउल की तरह बाउल बाउल जल्दी से टच करो बाउल को वेरी गुड बाउल में क्या करता है कनीस तथा साथ ही साथ रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताएं जैसे खाना पीना कपड़े पहनना और व्यायाम संबंधी प्रशिक्षण दिया जाता है ऑटिस्टिक बच्चों को भिन्न भिन्न प्रकार की कार्यविधियां उनके स्तर के अनुसार सिखाई जाती हैं, जैसे कुछ बच्चों के लिए कलरिंग विद इन वन एरिया मैचिंग एंड आइडेंटिफिकेशन फाइन मोटर स्किल्स आई हैंड कोऑर्डिनेशन कंसेप्ट ऑफ वेजिटेबल्स फ्रूट्स बॉडी पार्ट्स कलर्स पर जोर दिया जाता है तथा कुछ को प्रश्न पढ़ के उत्तर देने में और रोजमर्रा की आवश्यकताओं को पूरा करने में सक्षम बनाया जाता है इसके अलावा राइम्स डांसिंग सिंगिंग द्वारा लेजर 
एंड रिक्रिएशनल एक्टिविटीज में भाग लेने के लिए प्रोत्साहित किया जाता है इन सभी कार्यकलापों एवं प्रशिक्षण का एकमात्र उद्देश्य उन्हें स्वनिर्भर बनाना है ताकि ये डगमगाते पाओ सक्षम बन जीवन के एक एक पायदान पर दृढ़ता से आगे बढ़े और अपनी मंजिल को पाले एक तारा टिमटिमाता उसने आकाश को छू लिया एक लौ जली कहीं उसने अंधकार को मिटा दिया Welcome back after the break. Our topic discussion for today is modular concept in prosthetics. And right now we were discussing the lower limbs and the various types of limbs, the foot and ankle uh, joint, and the various materials uh, that are used in the formation of these limbs. The various uh, additive uh, features that can be there in each limb and the various uh, cost levels that automatically go up depending on the type of limb and the type of facility and feature that is present in the limb. So we'll continue with the discussion now. Uh, we now have the ProLight Multiflex Beaker system. So we'll discuss Basically, about this. Basically, uh, first of all, we uh, we will just discuss about the concept. Like uh, whatever the system is, these are the different kind of company system. And basically, it is the in between in the socket and the this uh, pylon adapter. In between, there are different kind of attachment. Like profile, it's a pyramid socket adapter. Like there's a pyramid socket adapter means the adapter will be here at the pyramid one. The pyramid adapter clamp. It's a pyramid uh, adapter clamp. This is the clamp and this is the pyramid adapter. Yeah. So that's why it is called pyramid uh, pyramid socket adapter, pyramid adapter clamp, and the aluminium pylon. This pylon is aluminium with bonded multiflex angle means the lower part this is the multiflex angle and the multiflex foot that's why it is called the this profile multiplex bk system and profile stellar bk system the stainless steel pyramid laminate socket adapter basically that now the system is changed like here uh, the socket system is the laminated and the steel the, the pyramid is the steel one and the adapter is a basically laminated one so that's why it is called stainless steel pyramid laminate stock socket adapter pyramid adapter clamp that's the same aluminium pylon bonded with the tube ad clamp adapter and stellar foot the foot is now changed so these are the if you see the four system the adapter with and bonded pyramid adapter that basically the uh, the above is a pyramid adapter and lower is also pyramid adapter and adapter with bonded pyramid adapter single bolt system like like here the four bolt system if you see the socket is attached with the four bolt system so sometimes the socket is attached only central bolt so there will be no four bolt system the single bolt system will be there so that is called the single bolt system adapter and pyramid clamp basically that is also a same clamp but a single bolt system adapter and pyramid clamp that is also a different kind of and that is a basically trans tibial build dynamic response foot two that is again the lower system if you are a multi means like you are interchanging the lower portion with a different kind of system that different is that kind of system that is the that's <coughs> the basically this is also same that's a telescopic and torsion pylon. This is the basically the uh, earlier we had discussed about the torsion, like this activity when golfer do like twisting of the leg. So for that, these kind of the pylons are used. Basically, instead of this pylon, normal pylon, we just interchange. Suppose patient wants to that, just we will remove this one, put that pylon, torsion pylon, and he can have the rotational facility. The, this is TT pylon. The process is used with the TT device provided with the 30. Um, this is the basically uh, an internal mechanism how it works. The TT pylon. I think we have a short of time. That's why we will not have a discuss about all this mechanism. A dynamic risk response to foot with TT system. Now this uh, uh, with this uh, TT system uh, and DR2 foot how it will look like. And TT pylon with DR2 foot. DR2. 
and they are above knee system now we will come over the knee joint part now we have discussed about foot system pylon and over this how the uh, below knee system now the patient is with the above knee amputee like his knee is also amputated above the knee so we have to add another joint that is called knee joint knee joint and from last 20 years lot of research has been done in this knee joint and at least in the market i think around 200 kind of knee joints are available from diff uh, by different companies different time and if we describe the knee joint basically knee joint of uh, you can say uh, it can be distributed in function wise and it can be by linkage wise so the common uh, common knee joint is a four bar linkage nowadays a very advanced kind of knee joint that is a common four bar linkage one two three four if you see this one two three four this is the four bar linkage knee joint what is the basically a four bar linkage four bar linkage is a basically it's a linkage it gives you a movement like move karega like if you see it it it's moves it's moves like a normal knee joint if if it is a single axis knee joint it will not move like this because our if you see a, a normal anatomical knee joint it has a uh, uh, there is a two kind of move, uh, movement in our normal knee. Normal knee, it's flex also and it also rotates. So there is a rotation as well as gliding so on the knee joint. So it is moving round wise and uh, moving forward. So there is a two movement. So single axis movement is, with a single uh, axis hinge, it is not possible. That's why it the four bar linkage has been done. If you see four bar linkage movement, it gives you a, a forward movement as well as gliding. So that's this four bar linkage knee joints are better knee joint and it uh, when patients walk it definitely it looks like a normal knee joint now now we have a above knee system now we i don't have right now socket but now you see the foot system we have described foot system patient has chosen according to the foot system according to his choice now we have a pylon the pylon is chosen by the uh, patient according to his choice now the knee joint the four bar linkage we have discussed now this four bar linkage now it, it comes five bar five bar right now i don't have five bar but the fifth bar is also a, a, another added feature in that and this bar now if you see this this movement is with the help of spring sometime sometime it is with the hydraulic system sometime it is with the pneumatic system now this movement this movement is operated by means this the power for for this uh, for the movement of this joint it is here sometime it is fitted with the hydraulic system sometime it is fitted with the uh, spring system or pneumatic, pneumatic system so depend upon the so uh, th uh, they have a different their uh, means uh, advantage and disadvantage of pneumatic like uh, if you see just i will give you a simple example of hydraulic system like like in a hydraulic system hydraulic system will be the filled with the if you see this is the knee joint it is a total hydraulic system if it will fill with the oils and piston so it will be quite heavy so but it will give you a very smooth movement so the the patient those who wants very smooth movement and very means uh, they can uh, okay I, i'm okay with the weight so they can go for that but, but in pneumatic system it will filled with the air so it will definitely it will be a lightweight and it will it will also give you a smooth movement but in spring move spring uh, loaded what happened is spring loaded it will give you a jerky movement means because spring actions it will give you a jerk so every time it, it will jerk so it when patient walk it will be a jerky movement so those patients are definitely that kind of knee joints are cheaper and so the patient those who are uh, go for they can go for a just with that jerky movement they can go for that but those who wants to better one they can go for a pneumatic and hydraulic system so these are the different kind of knee joints and their internal mechanism if you see now this uh, th uh, that is the basically advantage of this kind of knee joint when patients uh, patient is like 
so it it gives the movement like our normal knee joints it deaccelerate uh, de in back swings when patients uh, uh, take a full flexion of knee joints and when uh, he starts walking so it deaccelerate so it is normal walking if you see uh, like in a single axis knee joint what happened patient takes it it automatically go with accelerate very fast way so but this kind of knee joint uh, with pneumatic system or a hydraulic system and four bar linkage it deaccelerate and accelerate like when uh, when uh, when it is needed to uh, mean uh, accelerate the things it also accelerate the things when during heel strike and uh, to up to toe off it uh, it compensates the requirement of patient like uh, like our normal limb it deaccelerates when the uh, and prevents the knee from the noisy impact noisy impact sound and during heel strike its speed increases because the the piston here you can say the energy is stored and then released while advancing the limb so patient has not to do so much effort with such type of limb and when the patient sits down it automatically gets locked in such type of position when the patient stands it provides total stability with such type four bar linkage knee the stability is there we cannot easily push out the limb but when the patient advances his sound limb then it automatically gets rotated so to activate uh, to activate such type of knee joints the patient has to advance one limb then a flexion moment is there energy is stored and that release during toe off these are designed and aligned in such a way that so like when patient will heel strike it automatically goes off and when patient is fully uh, giving the load on on standing position it will not move so there is a security also so whenever he will do the heel strike automatically it will rotate because of weight it's these are the weight actuated basically a knee joint because of heel strike and weight it will move so so we are discussing here the four bar linkage knee and knee joints but even if we are using uh, uh, single bolt alignment system single axis knee joints they have a separate frictional brake mechanism they are using graphite brakes to uh, uh, just inadvertently buckling of the to prevent the buckling of patient inadvertent buckling of patient they have frictional brakes when the patient uh, flexes his knee up to 25 degree centigrade inadvertently then the joints automatically get locked so fear of falling is not there in such type of joints in the era uh, it elaborates the piston moments how the piston, piston works inside the knee joint inside the knee joint there are different type of pistons you can you can say the first one is spring loaded the second one is hydraulic it is called hansen mouth knee joint the third one is also hansen mouth but hydraulic the fourth one is pneumatic and the fifth one is advanced pneumatic or is it called hybrid system hybrid system means Uh, within a single uh, cylinder there is a separate hydraulic piston a, a hydraulic unit and a separate pneumatic unit so when the patient according to patient need during a stance activity a stance control means when the patient is standing uh, uh, over his prosthetic limb uh, what happens hydraulic system works Do, during swing phase the pneumatic system works so it is called a stance hydraulic control and swing phase pneumatic control then there is a stance flex uniaxial knee then there are servo pneumatic swing phase control servo pneumatic swing phase control is actually a hydraulic control hydraulic uh, cylinder controlled knee joint and it is provide a stance a stance phase stability the, uh, actually in um, i think um, older patients or uh, the geriatric patients or the patients with uh, in another limb with hemiplegia and uh, such type of uh, knee weakness such type of limbs are very useful then there are intelligent prosthesis plus they are provided with uh, intelligent control they have a special circuitry and chips that sense the movement of uh, patient's limb and they cope up with the movement i want uh, moria sir to just uh, describe basically, basically in these kind of uh, if you see the uh, uh, right now in uh, 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 the latest version is a intelligent processes basically intelligent processes is nothing it's basically a circuit a chip has been 
incorporated with the knee joint which control the movement of these swing face and uh, stance face control. So what happened? It basically control this piston movement as per the sensing. If he sense the movement of another limb, another leg and according to that move, uh, sensor, he control this uh, movement. So patient can, if patient wants to run faster, he will, he, uh, the, uh, it will sense the movement and it will make him easy. So that this movement will be fast. If patient is on the uh, means uh, he wanted to resist himself, he wanted to stand himself, it will automatically resist the movement and it will lock the knee joint and grip the movement. So he will not, uh, it will make him to not move the, his leg. So uh, like uh, uh, Tehlin company, they make autopilot, like uh, Endolite, they make intelligent processes uh, and uh, Autobock, Autobock make C leg. Intelligent food system also they are like proprio food is there and uh, we are going to discuss <coughs> four bar knee disarticulation process it is basically used for knee disarticulation patients where uh, <coughs> The uh, tibia and uh, femur are uh, separately disintegrated and such type of disarticulation is not, not actually amputation, it is a disarticulation. In such type of uh, amputation, the basic problem is that if the patient is using uh, uh, above knee prosthetic joint, when he is sitting, the prosthetic joint comes ahead of the normal, normal limb. To alleviate such type of problem, the four bar linkage, uh, four bar knee disarticulation prosthesis is invented. So while sitting, the posterior bar comes beneath the anterior bar and the prosthetic knee joint doesn't come far forward from the normal limb. So it is highly functional, extends just 27 mm while sitting, indolite PSPC for natural gait, semi-automatic knee lock for the less able amputee, minimum wilt height is 18 mm, 125 degree knee flexion capability is there high instantaneous center of uh, rotation is there, optimum shortening of the scene and simple central alignment coupling is there. Now here is the example of a child uh, baloney system, child above system with 4 bar link and knee joint as we have previously discussed that 4 bar link and knee joint provide more uh, stability than single axis knee joint. Then there are uh, cosmetic coverings that is supplied with the uh, the above knee components or below knee components. When the all the systems means like this, uh, all the systems are incorporated. Like uh, the patients, if patient wants to go, if he is uh, means like it's a female patient, he is wearing some uh, kind of short uh, skirt or something like it will be open. So definitely it will be look very odd, a robotic arm, something like a robotic leg or something like. So we, uh, every company supplies some patient use. It's a patient choice basically. Some uh, uh, it's a leg shape cover. It's a very lightweight. It's a means very lightweight and it's a water resistance. So cover it will be like a shape of leg and it comes in different colors and different kind of stockings and all those th things can be used. So the whole things will, will look like your normal leg basically. Next slide. Adaptive. This is the basically adaptive knee. What we are discussing about that uh, in uh, IP, uh, the uh, computerized knee joint. This is the adaptive from Endolite company. This is the his uh, control of mechanism. Intelligent prosthesis plus. What happens with uh, we can compare adaptive C leg and autopilot. Autopilot from Technomed, Tehlin, and uh, uh, adaptive from Blatchford. And uh, your C leg from Autobock. In uh, all the three systems, there are uh, uh, automatic uh, programming. The patient can program it himself or the, it is programmed by a prosthetist. A qualified prosthetist programs the knee according to patient needs. In, such in all the, these type of prosthesis, the motion is cadence dependent. It, as for example in adaptive, 
the present is, uh, the motion is uh, programmed in slow fast medium slow medium medium fast so the five mode of operation is there and the patient can change one mode to uh, second mode and within seven steps the prosthesis uh, works according to instruction of patient or the inst uh, or so it is called cadence dependent motion and patient if patient wants to means uh, on the manually operate like if patient wants to don't want to use with the electronic system sometimes what happened it's ele if electronic system failed so what happened the knee joint will not lock it will operate like a manual system so patient go with that means at that time the art means the computerized system is not working but that he is wo working on the normal system so the and the other advantages of uh, such type of intelligent prosthesis or adaptive prosthesis or CLA or autopilot or such type of intelligent prosthesis is that it is adjusted according to individual need for level walking at different speed, ramp and stair descent, easy ascent of slopes, sitting, standing and stumble. It is a microprocessor controlled knee joint. A microprocessor swing and stance control allows variation in cadence. Other modes include ramp, stairs, stumble, sitting and standing. Means in all such type of activity, they are providing better stability than any other knee. This is an internal structure of adaptive prosthesis. this is all about the knee joint but now we will come uh, next over that like this is uh, we had covered the uh, foot piece ankle piece pylon and over that below knee system now above knee system and apart from this after above knee like uh, the patient is amputated from the hip then we have the hip joint means uh, the same system so like over that the hip joint will be placed and the socket will be made like socket here here it, it's it's a baloney socket but i'm just uh, uh, giving oh, you example right. that that uh, that will be above me now you can understand with the socket knee joint pylon ankle and foot this is now above knee now is the hip disarticulation so a hip processes so over this the hip uh, the hip joint will come and over the socket, that will, socket come. will come so that will be the hip pro hip disarticulation processes uh, previously what used to happen that the same knee joint is reversed for hip joint but nowadays the different type of hip joints are available according to patient is a single bolt alignment uh, canadian system is basically the integrated used in integrated system uh, but uh, now endoskeleton hip joints are also available, 4 bar linkage, 5 bar linkage with greater stability. So these are all about the modular concept in prosthetic field. They are, are uh, regularly there are new inventions, there are new plannings, come new designs according to uh, patient need, patient comfort. I think these will enhance the prosthetic field in the coming future. And the cost will, uh, with the invention of uh, newly prosthetic component and uh, Including in the market, the cost will definitely come down and it will come in the approach of uh, your common man, common patients. So that means the whole uh, concept of this modic uh, modular concept we have that uh, it's a very inti uh, it's a whole shift from the integrated uh, basic conventional system in this the whole uh, the main feature is the interchangeability of parts and the interdependence of parts and the flexibility is a very major factor we discussed the various advantages uh, that are in relation to this modular concept of prosthetics we discussed all the upper limb uh, parts that can be used how they can be interchanged the functional devices how they can be changed by the person who's using the limb himself it can be changed by him within 30 seconds of time so basically uh, there's a lot of time savage then the Although the cost is a little on the higher side and the cost also varies uh, with the difference in the materials, with the range of uh, the various materials and with additional features and additional facilities in each of the limbs, the price or the cost of the limb goes up. So this was about the upper limbs as well as the same applies in the lower limbs as well. We discussed the foot and ankle joint, then we discussed the whole uh, below knee. Uh, limb, we discussed the upper knee limb, we discussed the socket joint, we discussed all of this and this was all about the modular concepts. I hope uh, all the visual clippings and all these demonstrations must have been completely useful to our viewers. 
So that's all for now. Uh, I would request our viewers to please get back to us for any kinds of suggestion and feedback. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, that's all for now. So we'll see you in the next show the next time. Thank you.